What's up, Rams fans? Welcome back to Ram Showcase. Tonight, we're talking NFL Draft, plus more NFL Draft talk. And later, the NFL Draft is this week. We're talking about it next on Ram Showcase. Welcome to Ram Showcase on Sports War Radio. What's going on, Rams fans? Welcome back to Ram Showcase right here on Sports War Radio. I'm your host, Joe Brandon, but you can and should call me Sheriff Joe Bags. And I'm laying down the law for you guys tonight. A lot of stuff to get into as far as the draft goes, and that is what we will stick to. I did not open it up for fan quesos this week. A big part of that is because this is the draft, and I know what those questions were going to be. It was going to be, hey, what do you think about this guy? What do you think about this guy? What do you think about this guy? And uh, that's fine, and those are awesome, but uh, we're going we're gonna to push fan quesos to next week, and then we'll get, we'll get back with them, and then uh, we'll talk about the guys that we did get. We'll talk about that next week as well. We are going to be doing a little bit of a NFC West preview as far as the draft goes, including your Los Angeles Rams, but we'll take a look at the Seahawks, Cardinals, and 49ers. But I do want to let you guys know that uh, immediately following the draft uh, on Saturday, so at the end of end of the, the final rounds, once seven wraps up on Saturday, we were, we we're actually going to be doing uh, another NFC West roundtable. I love doing these, by the way. These are super fun, and and the guys that are on there are awesome. Uh, typically, it's it's hosted by uh, the AZ Sports Fan, so make sure you guys follow him on YouTube, and then you can watch uh, watch me talk about our LA Rams draft, and possibly you know uh, CG will come in talking about who the Niners did get ultimately with that third overall pick that we will talk about, of course, a little bit later. Uh, the Cardinals sitting at 16. We'll, we'll see who they get. And then uh, the the Seahawks, they actually pick just ahead of us. And uh, they're, they're just at that 56 slot is uh, their first pick of the draft. Ours is at 57. So we'll talk uh, to Sweezy about that one. So uh, that'll be good stuff. Or uh, Steezy. I always want to say Sweezy. It's it's a problem. Maybe it's the Seattle thing. Maybe it's the Seattle connection. I'm thinking Sweezy, but it's Steezy is uh, the correct the correct word there. So, yeah, like I said, we'll, we're talking NFL draft and it it's uh it's 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 draft time. <laughs> That's for sure. If you guys did miss, I actually spoke with uh Joshua Cole Allen of Bucks Report. I did that on the show. So, it was uh actually on the YouTube channel for Ram Showcase. I I posted that uh, that interview that I did with him. Uh awesome dude and definitely knows his stuff. And if you guys I mean, if he didn't mention a name that you guys know about or that you guys really want, I'd be shocked because, I mean, he was loading it up with some really good information. So make sure you guys check that out as well. If you can't get enough draft content, that's going to be a good spot to, to start at least because uh, that interview uh, was awesome. And he, he, like I said, he really knows what he's talking about. So that was awesome. Uh, Bucks Report, uh, we've, talked it, we've, we've spoken with plenty of people from Bucks Report before. And uh, we'll get him back on, I know, for uh, the Rams and Bucks preview this season. Uh, that, that game will happen in, in Los Angeles, but good stuff there. And so we got that, and then we got this. And then, so uh, as far as tonight's episode goes, we are going to be talking about the Rams pre-draft visits, how these guys would fit into the, the Rams scheme and uh, team and, and locker room and all that stuff. And then, of course, we'll be getting into the rest of the West. And I think that's about it for this week. I wanted to keep it very draft uh, specific. There's some other stuff that I could have gone into, but I'm going to push that to next week. Like I said, I want to keep this episode just draft related. It's draft week, and that's what we got going for us right now. So next week, we'll talk about the guys, the six, possibly more, maybe less guys that the Rams do bring in via the 2021 NFL draft. But... Uh, and then we'll get into some other stuff as well. We'll get back to that. Uh, I know, oh, Cody, your top five question. I'm, I'm pushing that again because uh, I, as much as I was, I will really wanted to uh, to to throw it into this episode. First of all, I only have three answers for you so far. It's a top five, so I'm still working a little bit, and also it's not as draft related as I wanted it to be for this episode. So let's hop into it. So these are the Rams pre-draft meetings. And this typically tells us at least something. So it, it tells us who the Rams are looking at, at least what position groups the Rams might be looking at, anything like that. So uh, the 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 Rams are, they don't really have that many needs, but the needs that they do have, uh, they seem to be targeting those uh, via these, these pre-draft visits. So we're going to go ahead and start with the wide receiver position because that's one I've, I've been wanting to talk about a lot. So uh, first off, out of UCF, wide receiver slash tight end, Jacob Harris. 
North Carolina wide receiver Daz Newsom out of Western Michigan. We have Dwayne Eskridge out of Auburn. Anthony Schwartz, one of your Sheriff Joe Bags favorites. But uh, if you guys watch that that interview I had uh, with uh, Joshua Cole Allen, then the, the, he, may, he may be shifting my thoughts just a little bit on that one. Out of Iowa, we got Amir Smith Marset out of Auburn again. We have Eli Stove. Wake Forest is Chaz Surratt. And then out of Louisville, Tutu Atwell. So, uh, is wide receiver really a need? I, I don't think I, I don't think I believe it. I'm not, I don't think I'm buying that right now. I, I think it's something that the Rams could address, but to call it a need is where I kind of trip up. It sounds like this team at least wants to, to do their homework on the position, which is always a good thing. You know, you, you've got two guys making pretty decent money in, in Robert Woods and Cooper cup. And then you've got, you know, Deshaun Jackson who comes in as, as the speedster, but he's a little bit on the older side and, uh, we know his injury history, so and, and who knows if that's going to be the guy that the Rams decide to put back at the punt return slash kick return position, or one or the other, or none of them. We don't know yet. Uh, so I, I like that the Rams are at least doing their homework. We really don't even know what Van Jefferson brings to the table, although words from Sean McVay's face make it sound like he's at least going to get some more playing time this year, and that the excitement should be there for Van Jefferson. It looks like that's that's going to be a strong move. Uh, a move at this position definitely makes sense, but uh, does this tell us anything about our current group? That's my question. Does does the number of meetings, well, we got eight wide receiver meetings here. Does that tell us anything about our group? Is it Robert Woods, Cooper Cup, Deshaun Jackson, Van Jefferson, or is it Robert Woods, Cooper Cup, Van Jefferson, Deshaun Jackson, and guys like Simba Webster and stuff like that? So they can kind of, I mean, more of a special teams kind of vibe, but can come in technically on offense it what, what is the vibe and and i want you guys to be able to participate as well feel free to drop your comments on on how big of a need do you think that the wide receiver position is because i don't know if i would put it up that high as far as you know because some lists i'm seeing as a number the number one need wide receiver i don't i don't know maybe it's because we don't have that number one big body you know that 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 stereotypical you know number one wide out i i, I don't know but hey, Julio Jones is available, and if that can happen, get all these guys off this list. <laughs> but either way, I just don't really think that uh, that, that, that spot's a, a need for the Rams, although I do believe that they address it based on that Sean McVay offense. Of course, you lose Josh Reynolds, Deshaun Jackson comes in, but then of course you you also lose uh, Gerald Everett, who is an awesome receiving target as well, and I think that production will be shifted to a wide receiver, not necessarily depth at the tight end position. Let's take a look at the corners that the Rams have visited with. Out of UCF, we have uh, Tay Goen. That is two visits for that gentleman there. Out of Oregon, Thomas Graham. San Diego State has Darren Hall that the Rams have visited with. Visited with. Out of Florida State, Asante Samuel, Samuel Jr. And the Rams have visited with him twice. This feels like a guy that the Rams are interested in and that the Rams could actually get if he is available at that 57 slot. But... Honestly, I don't know if he will be. That This might be one of those guys, if the Rams have kind of fallen in love with a guy like Asante Samuel Jr., then a move up kind of makes sense, but with limited draft capital, only six picks, and needs with depth at different positions. It's not that the Rams are desperate for as many guys as they can get right now, but some depth along the offensive line, at linebacker, at corner, uh, those are all reasonable things to... to to, to think that the Rams will address that via the draft. So losing picks doesn't necessarily stand out to me, but if the Rams do see a guy that can contribute immediately instead of some... Just, like, if you can get one guy who you know is going to contribute day one instead of three depth guys, I think you go ahead and make that move. Myself. Uh, but uh, also, uh, we have Elijah Molden out of Washington. So making a move at the cornerback position totally makes sense. What used to be one of the Rams' strongest groups has kind of dwindled, and it looks like it might be one of uh, one of the weaker ones. I don't want to. I don't really like saying that. I don't know. It's it, it really it's two studs and a log jam of average players, and I don't want to say you know that that guys like David Long are bad or anything like that. But it really is Jalen Ramsey and Darius Williams, and then just just a log jam of average. And it, it looks like right now today that David Long would be the, the, the nickel cornerback, but I fully anticipate a move and I'm thinking it could be a rookie. And also, I mean, keep in mind guys like Terrell Burgess can kind of slip into that spot as well. I, I, I think we've Taylor Rapp plays more in the box, but I think Burgess and, and possibly Fuller could maybe take some reps there. 
I would feel a lot better myself if that guy was Asante Samuel Jr., uh, somebody whose dad was, of course, in the NFL. Uh, he played for the Philadelphia Eagles, and I think, where else did he play? He played for one other team. Uh, I mainly remember him from the Eagles, though. I just think that's where it kind of made, he made a he made a decent impact over there. Let's take a look at the defensive line. Just a couple of visits for the Rams out of West Virginia, Darius Stills, and out of Iowa, Chauncey Golston has visited with the Rams. So, uh, this, I mean, losing Brockers and losing Morgan Fox, those are two losses, and of course you want to fill that out, but... You know, Ashawn Robinson didn't have a big impact last year, but he was also coming off an injury. And I think that this would be the year that maybe we see him a, a lot more involved. Also, Sebastian Joseph Day. I think that he has he has kind of been developing into into this guy. And that's exactly what the Rams draft for is guys like Sebastian Joseph Day. Guys that you draft, and you don't necessarily need them to be on the field day one. Just, you know, sacking quarterbacks and blowing up running backs in the backfield. It can be a rotational thing for a few years, and then once that guy's, you know, third, fourth year, anything like that, then you can kind of squeeze him in there, and he's he knows the scheme, he knows the team, he knows all this stuff, and and he can kind of, he, he's able to come in and contribute, I think, a little bit better than any rookie could. Well, I don't, I don't know, any rookie, of course, if, if, you, if you gave me, you know, Chase Young last year over Sebastian Joseph Day, I'm taking that all day, but uh, no shots to uh, SJD, but... You know, there's some some guys who are absolute studs immediately and some guys need to progress. And I think that the Rams kind of draft for that. I think they prepare for that is is to draft a guy third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh round and let him sit for a while. Let him get coached up. And then after a couple of years, see that development and we watch it on to the football field. So these this is exactly what I would see here uh, from Stills and Golston is just just kind of revamping the uh, the the depth of that defensive line group uh, right now because like I said it, it looks if I had to put my money on it I would say it's going to be Aaron Donald Sebastian Joseph Day and Ashawn Robinson starting on the defensive line for the Rams the next position that the Rams have had visits with is the running back position out of Louisville we got JVN Hawkins and out of UCLA Demetric Felton and I know anytime I say USC or UCLA there's people out there that are watching the Rams podcast and going like hey, I like that guy I hope we get him you know and I get it I totally get it. I want all the Texas A&M players. That so doesn't mean we're going to be good. Uh, but as far as Demetri Felton goes, I know nothing. So if you guys can impart some wisdom onto me, uh, do it. All right. Let me know if this guy's actually dope or not, because that's uh, that. obviously we all like our college teams and we all like when our college guys go to our pro teams. So and I know that there's a lot of UCLA fans out there uh, in L.A. Of, uh, of all places, which is weird. But uh, yeah, either way, the running back position right now it, it looks like Cam Akers and and uh, Daryl Henderson will be taking over the like the main the main role there. But behind that, I mean, you know, you got Raymond Clay. I don't know. It it seems like a, a position that could use some depth, I guess. But at the same time, I mean, I like going in with Akers and and, and Hendo. I, I don't hate that one bit. So. Uh, we'll see what happens. I, I would expect if the Rams do select a running back, I would anticipate that being a little bit later on, not necessarily in that in that second round range or in that third round range where the Rams currently have uh, two picks in the third round, one in the second. Uh, but that's where I would expect that that to happen. On the offensive line, out of Wisconsin Whitewater, we got Quinn Mainers, two visits for this guy. And that that tells you that these that the, the Rams are at least very adamant about doing their homework on this gentleman, which is always something that kind of sticks out to me. Any any of the guys that have two visits, it's that means the first visit happened and there was either a more information wanted or B, I mean, is more information wanted. What else? What else could it be? I mean, that's 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 really what it is, is is. It's it's either you want more information because you really like him and you really want to make sure that that's a guy that you want, or you want more information because you're like he's right there, he's right on the cusp of being on our board of of, of a guy that we definitely feel really good about taking, but we just don't know yet. So let's let's maybe meet with him again and and, and try to nail that down that decision. But I think that if the second meeting is there, even on that ladder scenario that I just played out, even on that ladder scenario, I would say that the second meeting is a positive thing. It, it's something that tells us at least that that the, the Rams were, were wanting more and, and were leaning at least towards towards having them as uh, somebody that they're interested in. Um, but also on the offensive line, Texas A&M, out of Texas A&M, we've got Dan Moore Jr. 
I like more a lot. Of course, uh, Texas A&M is one of the only teams that I watch out of uh, in college football. And I think a big part of that also, I know I get comments on this all the time of like, why do you not watch college football? Like, you love football with all your heart, man. And, and that's absolutely true. I'll watch, it sucks because I'll typically watch a high school game before I can watch a college game. But unfortunately, a big part of that is that Saturdays and Sundays, if I block out that much time, I will fall behind in my life. So <laughs> I unfortunately... We really just need to catch Texas A&M games on Saturday and then just move on and actually work on stuff. Uh, I love football and I like watching. And if I'm done with stuff and I love those like those games that kick off at like nine, <laughs> I love it because I usually get to watch those. Uh, but yeah, Dan Moore. Uh, but yeah, that's a, at the tackle position. The Rams are are aging and I'm talking about Andrew Whitworth. I don't think that's that's a surprise to anybody. But of course, the the Rams are are aging there. And if center doesn't get addressed, uh, it looks like there will be a battle between Brian Allen and Coleman Shelton. But I do anticipate a rookie coming in and also competing with them. I don't know if a rookie come coming in immediately says that the rookie is starting over Allen and Shelton. But I think it opens up an interesting battle. And also, don't forget that Austin Corbett can slide over and play that center position. And the Rams have guys like, you know, David Edwards and Joseph Noteboom, other guys that can play in that guard slot as well. So I think our offensive line is going to be okay. Honestly, my my concern, and this is my concern, it has been my concern for the last couple of years, is Andrew Whitworth making it through the full season. And especially now that we added another game. You know, what's that going to look like for a guy like Witt? And, and I'm glad that they didn't do the whole thing where it's 17 game season, but everybody's only allowed to be active for 16 games because then you're like starting the wolf for no reason when your quarterback's healthy and stuff. I, I hated that idea, but I'm glad they didn't do it. Uh, but yeah, that just it adds another component. And, and I don't hate more football. I'm not complaining about more football. I never would do that. Uh, I know some some people have made comments that, you know, it's there's more football. We're just going to get more injuries. I, I will never complain about more football. Even if I need to go suit up and play, I don't care. Uh, for even a different team, if the Broncos call me, they're like, dude, all right, man, like Drew Locke's down, Rippin's down. We need somebody that can throw the ball 30 yards. So I'm like, all right, I'm on my way. <laughs> all right, Vic, I'm on my way, man. Take me an hour and a half. I'll be there. Let's see. Yeah, I do. I, I think it, offensive line definitely gets addressed, though. Next position is outside linebacker out of Washington. The Rams have visited with Joe Tryon and out of Virginia, Charles Snowden, which is honestly one of my favorite names in this draft. I think that we're going to get a lot of good like fantasy football team names out of whoever takes him. So that'll be fun stuff. Uh, Joe Tryon, I've seen a lot of stuff of him going way before 57. So I'm not fully confident that he's going to be there, but I also... And not necessarily draft guy. You guys know that. Uh, but hey, maybe uh, Joshua Cole Allen answers that question maybe a little bit. Maybe you guys should watch that video. It, 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 we, <laughs> the best part about that whole video, by the way, guys, is that we said we were going to go for about 15 minutes. It's like I cut off a little bit, um, but it's it's like 50. <laughs> Instead of 1-5, it went 5-0. And time got away from me a little bit yesterday. That's all good, though. Offensive line opposite of, or excuse me, outside linebacker opposite of Leonard Floyd is a question mark ultimately. Uh, right now, I would say that there there are guys that we have on this roster that can take on that role, even if it were to be a rotational situation, such as Obaniah Okoronkwo and uh, Terrell Lewis. Uh, Lewis, of course, we know with the injury history, Obo actually with the injury history too. So I think that that gets addressed, but if it does not, it's not like, well, we're not going to do anything this year. Like good luck winning a game because we didn't get an outside linebacker. I think we'll be okay. But unfortunately that is a spot that, that we can use an improvement at uh, for sure. So Joe Tryon, Charles Snowden, I, those are, those are two guys that the Rams are at least taking a peek at. They're, they're, they're at least you know, they're, they're at least peeling back the curtains a little bit and seeing, what, seeing what's going on back there uh, at that outside linebacker spot. On the flip side, not even the flip side, that doesn't even make sense. A little bit inside, I guess, makes more sense. Inside linebacker, uh, so far we've just got one, and I'm going to do my best to not butcher this name. We will try. Out of Oklahoma State, we have Amen Bamiga. I'm usually name guy. I feel I usually take like a lot of pride in being able to pronounce people's names. I didn't even look this one up usually. Also, by the way, guys, everybody do this. Go to the Rams.com, go under the media tab, and then go under the pronunci pronunciation. 
because ev- like all the people with like even semi difficult names to pronounce, like Simba Webster, he tells you how to pronounce his name. They have a recording of him saying his name two times. They all do it. They all do it. All the guys with difficult names, Obanayo Okoronkwo, uh, Simba Webster, uh, they're all on there. And go figure out how to say these guys' names. Uh, what what commentators can I tag in that? Because come on, guys. I, I'm gonna, <laughs> I hate the, the comments, especially with Abucom. We don't have to worry about that one anymore, but Samson Abucom. But uh, it was like it was always like Abucom and I, I don't know. That was the, a popular one, but Abucom. He said it. That's why I say it like that. That's what he told me to say. Uh, but either way, we're getting off track there with the names. We're going to call him the inside linebacker out of Oklahoma State for now. Uh, the Rams do have an, a decent trio at inside linebacker. I like our trio at inside linebacker. It is not star-driven. It is not full of s- absolute studs. But it is full of guys who are contributors and can get the job done when when needed. And that is Micah Kaiser, Kenny Young, Troy Reader. I like those guys. I and We have three inside linebackers that, I, that I'm, I'm okay with, for sure. But uh, addressing this doesn't necessarily feel like that big of a need to me. I, I mean... The way that the Rams play a lot of nickel, so we've got three guys who can play that inside slot. Really, we see one on the field most of the time because we will see Taylor Rapp and Jordan Fuller in the box as well, especially if it's going to be a running situation. But we like to keep the secondary on the field, not necessarily the linebackers. That's why I don't think that this is something that the Rams attack. I know I'm going like way off base here, according to every other Rams podcaster and all the mocks and all that stuff. I just don't think the Rams go inside linebacker. I don't know if it's necessarily that necessary. You know what I mean? So I, I just don't I just don't see it. I, I, I would I think that the guys we have today can get the job done. And I think that last year they did fine. They it's the same guys that were participating in the number one defense in the NFL last year. And that's points and yards. So hey, I'm not hating it at all. I am not hating these guys at all. But um yeah, we'll see. We'll see if the Rams do decide to go with an inside linebacker. I wouldn't be like stunned or anything like that. It just, I don't, I think it, I don't want to say wasted pick. That's never real, first of all. Uh, But also, I don't know. It's, I mean, they, they know what they're doing and they know what they want, you know, And, and it's been very difficult as a Rams podcaster to figure out the trends of this team and, and what are they looking for? And, and what is the pre-draft lead up stuff? What does that mean? You know, it's, I mean, we, we've seen this team take take guys that we didn't visit with. We've seen this this team take guys that, that they visited with a, multiple times and, and met it like at at the uh, what is the uh, what is that bowl game? The, the, the senior bowl. We've like we've seen people like Rams met him at the senior bowl, at the combine, at pro days and like invited them for workouts and like that. And we've seen them take those guys. So. It, there's really no telling, but we're trying to pick up the trends here. And right now, those are your trends. Those are the guys that the Rams have have visited with, at least at the time of list making. <laughs> Things may have changed. Things change all the time, way too fast for me. Uh, but yeah, I like our inside linebackers, and I, I don't, I don't think that that would be necessarily the worst thing in the universe to go in with these guys. Uh, let me go ahead and. Um, Let me just take a quick break. We'll get into the rest of the West immediately after this. Welcome back in. Before we get into the rest of the West, uh, because we are Sans Fan Queso segment today, uh, what I just want to do is is, is just kind of brag on uh, Shaw's Customs just a little bit. I'm actually working on a commercial for Shaw's Customs. It looks like this is going to be more of a long-term thing. Uh, so, so I'm going to be working on a commercial after a uh, post draft, of course, it'll be probably Sunday that I start rocking that out. Um, I have most of the writing done. I just need to record it and stuff, but we got a commercial coming for Shaw's customs and, uh, he's also got some like little decals that are awesome and you guys will see them because I'm going to put them on things. Probably my computer for sure. I'm trying to see if we, we can get a custom Ram showcase one. Cause basically what it is, it's, it's like a, a circle logo in the middle and then it says Los Angeles Rams on it. It's, it's awesome. I, I got the yellow set. Uh, they're awesome. I, I wish I had the commercials <laughs> ready for you guys. Maybe I'll put like pictures up. They'll be over here. I'll put pictures up of some of them. They'll be there. So, uh, these are the ones that I got the, the, the yellows. Are the ones that I got. Yellow is my favorite color. I don't know if you guys knew that, but that's uh that's why I love that the fact that the Rams have yellow in their colors, and also that hopefully maybe we'll get a yellow jersey this year. That is yet to be seen, but 
Uh, yeah, Shaw's Customs, though. Make sure you guys hit him up. It's going to be Etsy.com slash shop slash Shaw's Customs. Ah, uh, Sean Connery, like, email address over here. But uh, I'm sure, you know, uh, you know, shot glasses. This is a little L.A. Ram shot glass. I've got my, my Ram Showcase beer mug over here. It's definitely seen plenty of beer just like my face has, and also, he's he did not make this, my Ram Showcase shirt, but I bet we could pull it off. I bet we could talk him into it, guys. I bet we could do it. Maybe we could do even Ram's colors. I don't know. I don't know, guys. I got this one, like, this one was just given to me. Somebody was like, hey, <laughs> do you want your logo on a shirt? Yeah, yeah, I do, actually. That's awesome. <laughs> I got my logo on all kinds of stuff. I got, like, my towels, mask, Beer mug. I have a decal down here. It's really big. I don't know where to put it yet. I still haven't decided, guys. It's been so long <laughs> since I've had that. Maybe I'll just put it on my guitar. I think that's actually what I'm going to do. I can figure it out. All right. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, Shaw's Customs is is the sponsor of the Fan Queso segment. That will be for the foreseeable future. I'm not sure exactly how long uh, that will go, but I'm actually I'm here for it as long as possible because Josh is awesome. Me and Josh, uh, we've been like Facebook friends and stuff like that for quite a while, and just an awesome dude. And I mean, he's he's just out here busting his butt cheeks, making people some awesome de- awesome decals. So you guys need to hop on that. Let's get into the rest of the West. We're going to do the Rams last in this one just uh, because we're talking about the whole NFC West, and I'm going to make you guys wait just a little bit. So most of this stuff has been prepared, and so a lot of this is is going to be reading because this is something I did on, like, Sunday, I think it was. So some of this stuff is pre-prepared, and just to break it down for you guys, what we're going to be talking about is each NFC West team's needs, where their first pick is, what to watch out of this draft, and my own personal most wild scenario that I can think of for each team. That's semi-realistic. It's not just like, oh, Rams trade up and, you know, we trade Matthew Stafford and our, <laughs> you know, our ones from 2024 to 2030 to the Jags for Trevor Lawrence. That's not going to happen, okay? If that happens, guys, I'll get a Seahawks tattoo directly on my chest, guys. It's not happening. And so, is a wild scenario. It's called the wild side. Because it's a little bit of my Motley Crueness coming out. Uh, and that's, I know it's like the most popular song ever by them, but it, it works out still. Because you can't call it Live Wire or something. I don't know. That's also super popular. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> you guys, you get it. All right. Uh, but first, we're going to start with the Seattle Seahawks. Their needs. Really, it's looking like linebacker and corner right now. But also, I mean, don't think that they won't help out Russ more if they don't. I don't know. I'm already getting vibes that this is going to be the last year we see Russell Wilson in Seattle. I'm not buying any of that, like their relationships better than it ever has been. I don't, I'm not I'm not buying that. Uh, but linebacker, cornerback, they definitely need some defensive help right now. Uh, so, so that's something that they could probably address in this first slot, which is the 56 position. Uh, they are immediately before the Rams first pick. So it's, it's back to back. We're late. And, uh, this, they actually don't have a first round pick courtesy of uh, the Jets and the Sam, or not the Sam Adams. That's, that's beer. That's my mom's on beer. Apparently, uh, Jamal Adams, Sam Adams is also a defensive tackle. You guys can't, I mean, it's football related still. Give me that one at least. <laughs> uh, but at the uh, 56 spot, but no first round pick for the Seahawks because they are, they, they do have Jamal Adams now. Uh, what to watch for the Seattle Seahawks. Seattle could go one of two ways, but they need to go both. That's it. Stories say that Russ and the Seahawks have never gotten along better, and I'm calling BS on that. Do they help Russ after underperforming that task in free agency, or do they, do they go up for what they really need, which is defense? My money says this is Russ's last year in Seattle, and how loud would it scream that? If the Seattle Seahawks took quarterback Kellen Mond, I'm not saying, I'm just saying. That's not even my wild side pick. Uh, This is a reasonable position for Kellen Mond. It makes total sense. I would see him going a little bit later, being my Texas A&M fan self. The thing that helps him a lot is that he's got a buttload of starts in college. I mean, he's been an A&M starter for quite a while. He's, I mean, Kellen Mond is the reason that uh, who, I mean, Kyler Murray wasn't at Texas A&M that, uh, you know, who else left? 
uh, Allen, what's it? What is it? Kyle Allen? There, he's the reason he left. I mean, uh, it's been a thing. And then Kenny Hill, is he still doing stuff? He went to TCU, but there are like good quarterbacks that left the left the Aggies because of Kellen Mond. He kept beating them out. So uh, this is it's reasonable for him at, at fifty six. I would put him a little bit later, more in like the 70 range, 70 to like 90 range is where I see Mond going. Uh, but also, I mean, let's be real here. Very unlikely that, that the Seahawks go Kellen Mond at their first pick. That would really surprise me. And it, I think I, we'd get so many storylines of, you know, uh, of comparisons to to Jordan Love and the, the Packers situation last year. I know that much, but I know Russ, too, would be like, for real. <laughs> You're like, are you guys kidding me right now? But uh, I don't see that happening. But I would expect a cornerback at this spot. That seems pretty real. And uh, this is a, a very deep draft for the corner spot. And uh, the Seahawks need that. So, I mean, you hit a couple of things there. You get you get a position that you need. And you also, I mean, you're getting a guy that's probably going to be pretty decent. At any top 100 pick is usually, that, and that's usually how the Rams look at it too, I believe. I'm pretty sure Snead said that before, that they don't look at it by round, they look at it by overall, and that they want just as many as possible in the top 100, not necessarily like the top 32. I think we only have like one or, or two or three, maybe, in the in the top uh, 100. It's, it's 57, 88, and I think we're at like 103. Anyway, wild side for... Uh, oh, I'm going too far here. Wild side for the Seattle Seahawks. Am I the only one? Only one that feels like Pete Carroll's seat is warming up just a little bit. Am I alone here? How much longer is Carroll going to be able to stick around? How long do they want him around? Keep in mind that Pete Carroll's head coaching record is sub 500 without Russell Wilson. This Russ situation is not helping. I'll tell you that. Considering that Russ is the best player probably in that team's history, I mean, You can make some arguments. You can say, you know, Largent, and you can say Alexander. If you say Hasselbeck, I'm not having this conversation with you. But you can say names that do make sense. But I would say Russell Wilson is the best player that team's ever seen. That being said, we could see... We could see. I can't emphasize that enough. Could see... The Seahawks trading up. All right. This would be for somebody that they've uh, completely fallen in love with and mortgaging the future, because why not? If In this situation for the Seattle Seahawks, why not just mortgage the future? If you if you really like a guy, because one of two things is going to happen for Pete Carroll. Either you nail it and you're a genius and way to go, Pete, or you totally screw it up and you're not even here to miss those picks. That's the next guy's problem, which happens a lot, <laughs> which happens a lot. Um you can you can either screw it up for the next guy or you can be the hero. And that's only if you really fall in love with the guy because I think the Seahawks only have like, what, four picks or something? Pretty rough. Let's move on to the Arizona Cardinals. They are the closest team outside of the Denver Broncos to myself. Twelve and a half hour drive, though, still. So not super close. The team needs in Arizona. Looks like cornerback and running back. Running back is a, is a touchy first round subject for most NFL draft followers their first pick is at 16 overall but based on their free agency I don't think that the the Cardinals try to make any kind of move up attempts I think they addressed most of their needs via the free agency period so what to watch for the Arizona Cardinals the Cardinals addressed just about all of their needs in free agency and will likely look to make a move at the cornerback position Farley would make sense here depending on how the Cardinals feel about his injury history this selection uh, with a uh, with Arizona is the earliest that I could see a guy like Asante Samuel Jr. going, uh, depending on who else is still on the board at that spot. There are about five guys at the cornerback spot uh, who could be available here. Or, or I mean, okay, let me just read that. Uh, so there are there are about five guys who at this spot would be a reach, and not all of all at or would not be a reach at all. And the Cardinals should have at least three to pick from. With uh most, with with most of the early attention in the draft going to that corner or the the offensive spot, so sixteen is kind of a sweet spot to pick up a defender if you need one. I mean that's you're sitting kind of pretty if you especially if you like a lot of these guys and the Cardinals 
Secondary, that was their weakest spot last year. I anticipate them addressing that. Patrick Peterson leaves. He's a Viking now, going to wear number seven with this new rule. And then they replace him with Malcolm Butler, which I don't think is really that strong of a replacement, so I can see a corner coming in. Farley, I mean, Farley's awesome player. The injury history is uh, raising some flags for a lot of people, so we'll see what happens. But the wild side here, Micah Parsons falls to the Cardinals, and they turn in their card before Roger Goodell can even finish saying the Arizona Cardinals are on the clock. Parsons and Simmons at the linebacker spot for the cards. That does not sound appealing for somebody who's a Rams fan, I'll tell you that much. But it's unlikely Parsons falls to this spot. But there are a lot of players uh, on the offensive side and the cornerback position getting a lot of attention. Corners and offense, that's what that's what's getting attention, at least at the top of the draft, the top half of the first round for sure, uh, which is, I mean, the Cardinals are like right in that middle spot there. But uh, I don't expect more than 15 guys a lot more than 15 guys to be picked over Parsons if 15 guys get picked over Parsons I think that would be that would be pretty uh I I mean Parsons is awesome man I it is uh it is possible but if he's sitting there when the cards uh pick I I think that they would be stupid to not just create the 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 best inside linebacker combo in the in the NFL like the the best duo because if you pair him with Simmons Simmons and Parsons, I mean, you you have monster linebackers at that point. And uh, yeah, I think that the Cardinals would be stupid not to, in, unless they really do just love one of these corners and and think that that's, uh, that's the way to go. Let's move to the 49ers. Their needs are, I guess, quarterback. I mean, that's probably what they're going with. And a cornerback as well. Their first pick, third overall. They moved into that spot not that long ago. And no one really still knows who they're going with, which is the dumbest thing ever to me because we know who's going one, Trevor Lawrence. We know who's going two. It's going to be Zach Wilson. At least that's like a 98 percenter. It's not 100 percent technically, I guess, but we're very confident that we know who's going to. So why like, just say who like what? what who, what are you trying to hide? <laughs> what are you trying to hide? Are you like trying to not show your cards in case somebody wants to move up? Bro, no one's moving up. Jags and Jets are not giving up their spot. No one's getting ahead of you, San Fran. All right. Just pick somebody. And I mean, word is that Shanahan likes Mac Jones while everybody else likes Trey Lance. Trey Lance has been my pick for the 49ers for quite some time. That was that was my immediate pick for them. Everybody they traded up and everybody's like, Mac Jones, Mac Jones, Mac Jones. And I I wasn't buying that at all. I was saying Trey Lance. So uh if Justin Fields kind of creeps in there, that wouldn't surprise me. But honestly, like, what if the Jets just jet it up and and totally screw this up and they take Mac Jones? Oh, my goodness. Then, I mean, it's going to be a disaster for everybody else. But also, I mean, there's a little part of me that just wants to see the Jags draft Micah Parsons and just ruin everybody's draft. <laughs> he was like, could you imagine the Jets reaction to that? Because they'd probably like, they'd probably go, uh-huh, really? <laughs> we got Trevor, you know, they, and not turn in their card in time. And then he goes to the... And then he goes to the Niners. Oh, I just blew my own mind. All right. <laughs> Let's go with all the what to watch. Uh, this kind of trade usually doesn't happen so far ahead of the draft. But with us feeling good about the first two picks, it makes sense that the 49ers do have their guy. You don't make this kind of move unless you have a guy that you think uh, is like is that guy, the, the, the guy that you want. Do you really make a trade up? Do you really go up that far to be like, well, I mean, we'll probably like one of these guys. I don't buy that. All right, I not I don't buy that at all. I think that you trade up with a guy in mind already. I think the decision's been made. I think that it'll probably come out. It's like, oh yeah, we knew who we wanted when we made the trade. Why would we make a trade if we didn't know who we wanted? Because what if you make that move? You trade all these all this stuff away. You get a, a, up high in the draft, and all of a sudden you're you're looking at all these quarterbacks. You're like, I actually I think these guys kind of suck. I don't like any of these guys. Well, I guess it's Jimmy G, and then you you know move on to uh yeah you get you. I don't know what you would even do, but yeah, I, people saying though that, uh, they're going to go with Kyle Pitts. That's not going to happen guys. That's not going to happen. Uh, but either way, I feel like you have a guy at that spot. Uh, I've stood strong as Trey Lance to the Niners, but Jones fields, Lance, they all make sense. And none of those real, none of those options should really cause a shock reaction from anybody. I think everybody, uh, it, any of those guys being selected, it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, no one should be like, what? Jones or what field what Lance no that shouldn't happen they're all realistic all right my uh, wild side pick here is Kyle Pitts question mark 
That feels like uh, the most wild outcome, out, well, the most wild possible outcome at this at this spot. Uh, but I really don't expect this to happen. This move was made for a quarterback. Fields, Lance, Jones, they'll be the pick here without any doubt. I I, I see no reason that the, the 49ers really shake it up that much. Uh, and also, I mean, you can, you can feel that they don't really, they're ready to move Jimmy. They don't really care. And uh, also, the 49ers already have the best tight end in the game today, George Kittle. I mean, I realize he's our rival, guys, and I know that some Rams fans hate me saying that, but, I mean, dude's got insane amounts of talent, all right? Um, but Parsons, I think, would be the more realistic off-the-wall pick here, honestly. I, I think that that would, that would kind of make sense. It'd be like, that would surprise me, but it'd be like, well, I mean, I mean, do your thing, guys. <laughs> John Lynch. All right, and we will get to the Los Angeles Rams here. I put our needs at center and cornerback. That's where I see the Rams needing the most attention. Rams' first pick is at 57 overall, immediately after the Seahawks' first pick. What to watch? The Rams could, in theory, enter the season today and have all of their starters ready to go. There are some spots that could use improvements, however. Center in particular, but Shelton and Allen look to currently be in line uh, for a battle at that job. Does Stafford have any kind of say here? At the center position. Is there any part of him that's like, I like this guy over this guy? Does that matter? Does, does Sean McVay listen to Matthew Stafford? I gotta think he's going to, all right? Especially in a situation like this, where Matthew Stafford's coming into a team that has a better running game, more weapons, a better offensive line, a better defense, a better coaching staff, screw it, better city, better stadium, <laughs> better fans. Everything is better for Matthew Stafford now. So you got to think that he's going to have some input and be like, hey, man, this did not work when I was in Detroit. Or he's going to say something like, what? I didn't even know this stuff was possible because I played in Detroit my whole career, man. So I don't know. We'll see <laughs> uh, Matthew Stafford if he does have that much of a say. But I, I anticipate him having a little bit more control than a guy like Jared Goff did. Goff, honestly, I mean, we're not going to get into that, actually. We'll do that next week. We'll talk about Goff and Stafford, maybe, <laughs> next week. It just, I don't know. It just seems Stafford's just more of a grown-up. I think he's more of a football player uh, than, than Goff is. Um, but let's see. Offensive line or cornerback makes perfect sense in, in this spot, but depending on uh, the Rams' board and who is available, uh, this could be where the Rams try to get another weapon. Team Anthony Schwartz. I'm Team Schwartz. Dude is fast AF, and I think he would fit in really well with uh, with what the Rams do specifically, with the Sean McVay offense specifically. Normally, I don't just go for guys that are that are super fast, who just got burners. That's usually not the, 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 the evaluation. It's the way that he is using that speed, and he hits that top end speed, and is still able to use that vision. I think this could be the Rams punt returner guy. You know, fumbles would worry me, but again, they always do. So I don't know if that can be fixed in my own head. If I can just not be worried that somebody's going to fumble the football, I don't know. Uh, he just looks like he belongs in a Rams uniform to me, though. Uh, I liked him the second that I saw him take that end around against my Aggies to the crib in 2019. The kid has absolute wheels. He looks the part of a Sean McVay wide receiver. That's why I say any of those uh, those comments over there. So, um, But... Let's see here. Let's go to the wild side for this one. I know you guys will, uh, will enjoy this one um, because I forgot what it was, and we're going to look at it now. Uh, like I said, I made this on uh, on Sunday. I've got like, but the thing is, the reason why I forgot is because I had like seven. I don't know why. I don't know why I had seven, so let's see which one I picked. The most wild scenario I can think of is the Rams moving up in this draft. Okay, so I went, I went with one of the more, I guess, boring, uh, I guess ideas that I had, but it's okay. Um, so one of the other ones, uh, let me think, I, I did have a quarterback at this spot. Um, dang, I really forgot. Oh, well, doesn't matter. We're on with this one. With only six picks, uh, the capital is just not there for a move up. Trading down feels a lot more real, and with some depth needs at linebacker, cornerback, and along the offensive line, having more picks uh, feels more real than moving up for a specific player. At 57, there is a short list of guys who would be day one starters on this roster. So if the Rams were able to move up and feel good that whoever they select would have an immediate impact due to the low number of total picks already, uh, that, that, that's where I could see that happen. Is is only if the Rams really feel confident 
that this guy is going to be able to come in week one, week two, week three, and be on the field as a contributor. Otherwise, you don't lose draft capital to uh, to, to move up for a guy who's just going to sit on the bench, especially when you have depth. The, those depth needs. If the Rams were to make a move up, the names that jump out to me, uh, the the name that jumps out to me is Asante Samuel Jr. I think that that makes total sense. I think that he would contribute day one. I think that, uh, you know, depending on how far the Rams would need to move up for a guy like that, uh, it looks like possibly 40s. I, I don't think the Rams go into the first round at all, but uh, possibly 40s in that range. Then, you know, I, I think that makes that makes total sense. Asante Samuel Jr. Like I said, his pops played in the NFL, watched him play there. I'm at that time in my life where I 100% remember guys playing, and now their sons are being drafted. I remember, like, making fun of my dad, like, calling him old and stuff. But now we got, like, J.C. Horn, Joe Horn's son, uh, Asante Samuel Jr., of course, Asante Samuel Sr.'s son. Uh, you know, <laughs> and these are guys that I actually remember watching play, and that's the problem. Because, of course, I know who Howie Long is. Of course, I know... Uh, other guys, but <laughs> either way, uh, it's now it's like I watched these guys play and now their kids are coming in. I guess I'm just an old man, I'm 29, which is where doctors say that males are at their physical peak. And I'll be honest with you guys, I'm 29 now. So that just depressed me. It was like, oh, this is this is the max. Like, this is as good as it gets. <laughs> this, damn it. Like, you know, oh, well. Hope you guys enjoy this draft, though. Again, we are going live on uh, the the AZ Fan, the AZ Sports Fan YouTube channel. I'll link it below so you guys can find it. Uh, as soon as the draft is done, head over there. We're going to be talking about the draft. We're not going live during the draft because, A, everybody is. So, pretty saturated market there, and I'd like to just sit back and watch the draft myself. Uh, but keep an eye on if you guys are working or if you guys aren't able to pay attention, I will be making images as soon as Rams the Rams draft a player. I'll be making an image. It'll go up on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter on the Rams Showcase profile. So make sure you guys follow there. And uh, if you guys are busy or anything like that, you guys can get those updates. That way is one option. Another option is have the internet. It's, it's very available and all picks are tweeted. All picks are posted on Facebook. Uh, if you're in any Rams Facebook groups, I'm sure 80 people will post them there. There is ways to find this information. I promise you guys, it is there. But that is, um, yeah, you, you've got my ways now. Because I get, I make the images. I make, this is how you make images. Sign language for making images. <laughs> all right. But make sure you guys follow Rams Showcase on all of your favorite social media. That would be at Rams Showcase on Instagram and Twitter. Facebook.com slash Ram Showcase. You can follow myself as well at Sheriff Joe Bags on Instagram and Twitter. Facebook.com slash Sheriff Joe Bags. The draft kicks off on Thursday. Of course, for us Rams fans, we're looking more to Friday situation. And uh, that's where we'll be sitting at the 57 spot. We'll see what happens in that slot and uh, see who becomes your newest LA Rams. It looks like we'll get at least six coming up uh, on this weekend. We'll get some new Rams players. So uh, no word yet on when the new uniform will release, uh, but some fans seem to think that there are some clues hidden in the Rams draft house. I disagree. Uh, the, the actual clues that people are pointing to is the darker uh, the darker blue that is being seen on Sebastian Joseph Day's shorts and on umbrellas, which I think is an extreme reach, and I think means a lot of nothing. Oh well. Um, I, I think it's going to be yellow. Yellow or white. That's really what's going to happen here. Uh, but that is going to do it for me. I am Sheriff Joe Bags. This has been Ram Showcase on Sports War Radio. For those of you who aren't Rams fans, our thoughts and prayers are with you. For those of you that are Rams fans, thank you guys so much for listening, and you guys have a great night.